Hello. As we continue on in our series of surge protection and application, technologies, installation, now we want to go into our, our test lab and look at the actual surge generator and compare two different types of surge tests, standardized tests, and various different uh, topologies of technology for clamping transients and surges. So this video will be a little bit longer than the others, but we hope you enjoy it. And now let's go into our test lab. Briefly wanted to uh, give you some close-ups on our surge generator here that we have in our facilities. This generator is capable of producing the two standard IEEE ANSI C62 41 wave shapes. Let us zoom in on the uh, screen here and that way you can see a few things that I'll point out. Here on the screen here we have the selection between the combination wave and as we would select that we would load the standard user test here. You can see uh, combination wave line to neutral. We would hit that, say OK, and here bleeding up the, the 6,000 volts line to neutral. Exiting out of that, uh, the other standard wave shapes are the, uh, the ring wave which is the 100 kilohertz here, 270 degrees, 2,000 volts, line to neutral. Uh, the, you're capable of, of changing the voltage to go up to the full uh, 6,000 volts, 500 amps on the ring wave test. Again, this is a standard surge generator capable of creating the combination wave and the ring wave for which uh, we'll illustrate here of our various testing of different types of surge suppressors. Okay, what I want to do here is test a couple of different technologies just to illustrate uh, how they perform, how they function. As we showed the surge generator, we'll start off with the 100 kilohertz ring wave. And this is a, a typical, what we call a DIN rail mounted unit that uh, is found as uh, lightning or surge protection in, in many panels. And we've, we've hidden the name so that uh, we'll protect the innocent or the guilty. We will apply power to the unit. This one has no LED, so there's nothing to see. And the generator will charge to 2,000 volts and release it, and then we'll illustrate its clamping on the screen itself. Okay, here with these red lines, we'll get down to the base of the sine wave. We inject it at 270 degrees and with the top cursor we'll measure the top. And this unit here has a residual or let through voltage of 900 volts. So with respect to protecting electronics it's not really going to do a very decent job of removing or eliminating false zero crossings. Okay take this unit off and we will now test a, uh, a panel mounted type device. These are very popular. Uh, they'll provide typically maybe a little more lightning protection. Uh, this unit here is sold around the world. We'll zero out the scope, apply power, and charge the generator. Again, we're staying with the 100 kilohertz ring wave. The last one was 900 volts. This one uh, does a little bit better job on the uh, ring wave. We're at about 580 volts. So this is more of a hybrid type of unit rather as opposed to just a straight uh, metal oxide varistor. Okay, let's clear that. We'll remove this unit. Set it aside. This unit here is, uh, is, is quite popular. It can be mounted internally into a panel itself or externally. And this unit itself actually has a, uh, an audible alarm that will signal when there's uh, problems within the unit or when the, the dry relay contacts are not connected. So we're going to test this one line to ground as opposed to line to neutral. And we'll apply power, 
LED is on. Charge up the generator. And this one is almost identical to the previous one. We're at about four, 580 volts. So very similar type of technology with respect to uh, attempting to clamp the ring wave transients. Now let's, this time, let's test our uh, ECS's technology. This is one of our sign tamer units we had available, which is sold internationally uh, here in the USA. It's uh, Search Repression Incorporated, as we've discussed. We'll also test this one line to neutral and demonstrate the, uh, the technology that we've been discussing with respect to actually following or monitoring the sine wave itself. LED is on, so power is applied. As you can see, there's almost nothing on the sine waves. We'll have to change the uh, the scope itself so that we can zoom in on that small little transient that's left over. Now here we have approximately 50 volts. So out of the best of the other types of technologies, we've taken another 530 volts, 520 volts away from the connected loads of this equipment. This is the type of technology that uh, 21st century equipment in today's facilities demands to have in order to get the full benefits of that. Now let's look at one other quick test here before we uh, complete our testing to show how lightning protection actually occurs. We'll go with the, the hybrid technology itself and this time we will inject the combination wave uh, into the unit. We're going to inject it at 90 degrees of the sine wave. We'll change the generator. And again, we're going to be injecting line to neutral. 6,000 volts, 3,000 amps at 90 degrees on the sine wave. Now we want to change the scope value so that we don't go off of the uh, off the chart here. Now, this generator time will take a little bit extra charging time because we're charging up to 6,000 volts and 3,000 amps. And what we'll illustrate is that amongst these various technologies, we're all very, very similar with respect to clamping the major surges. Now you can see how the significantly different this sine wave looks now. We're going to the very peak of the sine wave, which is about 170 volts, with a residual voltage of 396 volts. This is a very, uh, very good unit with respect to clamping those combination waves. Okay, let's remove this unit and test typical unit found in many, many panels, the DIN rail mounted type device. Again, line to neutral. Apply power. Charge the generator. Generator is about to release the surge. Light spark there, and this unit has actually gone off of the scale a little bit, so let's, let's zero it back in. The peak of the sine wave there. This unit is about 750 volts. 
And significant difference between the, the hybrid type device and the pure straight MOV type device. See where that at. That's one final test to illustrate that not only will Sontamer SSI technology do transient filtering, but also lightning surge protection as well. Apply power, charge the generator. And all these tests have been uh, line to ground, 120 volt circuits. Release the surge. This unit sign tamer is down to about 420 volts. And not only will we do good lightning and surge protection, but transient filtration as well. We hope you uh, have enjoyed just a little demonstration on the different types of technologies, how they protect the advantages of our frequency attenuation network. Thank you.